nine things to consider when deciding between building a deck or a patio. Many of our clients just assume a deck or a patio is better based on some preconceived notion, but many times there are pros and cons and the um, particulars of each project that make a deck or a patio a better solution for our clients. And right now, decks and patios have become even more popular with COVID as people are spending less time in public places and getting more enjoyment out of their own backyard, uh, having people over and enjoying the privacy that a deck or a patio offers in our own home. So stick around to the end. We're going to talk about um, some bonus information about planning your deck or patio build. And I'm going to tell you my favorite solution between a deck and a patio. Before we jump into it, let me introduce myself. I'm Andrew Genitasio. I'm one of the owners of GTG Builders, and I welcome you here to this video. You're probably watching it on YouTube, and in that case, I, I ask you to subscribe to our channel so you get a notification when new videos come out that may interest you about all things custom homes, custom home building, and just enjoying your home. So without further ado, let's jump into this conversation, nine things to consider between building a deck and building a patio. Consideration number one, permitting. Decks almost always require a permit. Patios almost never require a permit. When considering permitting, remember permits have a cost and they require inspections. If you're hiring a professional, they should take care of the permitting. They should know what it costs. It's your job to make sure that they follow the rules though. If there's a DIY project, I recommend you go down, talk to the building department, find out what needs to happen um, so you can follow the rules. This may require you to do a sketch, show some details. Your building officials should be able to help you with that. One other thing to consider is it's never a good idea to skip permitting. It will always come back and bite you in the end. Consideration number two is view versus privacy. This is all about your situation. Is your backyard very private? where no one can see you or do you have neighbors right next door. A deck offers a greater view, but it also makes you more viewable to your neighbors. Patios offer an easy option for creating privacy through landscaping um, and through other structural solutions, but it can take away from a view if you're in a situation where another foot or two off the ground offers you a greater view of your beautiful private backyard. Consideration number three, terrain. Does your backyard drop off significantly? Are you on a hill where building a deck would really help with that situation in a simple way? Or is your backyard really flat and close up to your access point um, where a patio would be a nice easy thing to build? One thing I want you to consider when thinking about your terrain is we don't want to build a deck too low to the ground. So if you're Backyard is close to your back door, say, yeah, as far as height goes. And if we build a deck, if we'd only have a foot under that deck, that would be really hard to maintain. It would be really hard to keep pests and garbage out from underneath of there. So consider terrain when you're thinking about building a patio or a deck. Consideration number four is access. Related to terrain, because now we're going to talk about how do I access my outdoor living area most? Is it that I'm coming from in the house to the outside most of the time? Or am I using my backyard extensively like I have a pool or I love to garden or play games and I'm coming from the backyard onto my um, fixed living space? So obviously it's a good question to think about. Do I want to have four stairs coming out the back door onto my living area? Or do I want to have those four stairs, for example, going from my deck into my backyard? Um, do I want to make the access from in the house as simple as possible? Or do I want to make access from the backyard as simple as possible? Um, this is a consideration when there's a significant um, difference in the height between the back door and the backyard. And 
the number of stairs are going to grow. So consider access. How do I use this space most often? Am I usually coming out of the kitchen through the back door to use my grill? Or am I really outdoors? Do I have an outdoor kitchen, maybe a refrigerator, and I'm really out there most of the time and I enjoy going back and forth between the backyard and this living area? The next consideration between a deck and a patio is a big one to most people, and that is cost. I can say without a doubt that a deck will cost more than a similar sized patio. And that gap in costs is only continuing to rise with materials that are coming out that are lasting longer and requiring less uh, maintenance. That is pushing the cost of a deck higher and higher. Now, better materials for a deck means higher costs and less maintenance and more enjoyment. But um, if you're building a patio, you can increase the quality of your patio, something between concrete pavers and natural stones. And those changes in materials don't add up to a significant amount of money when you compare it to what it costs to build a modern deck. Consideration number six, Related to cost is resale value or return on investment. And this is particularly important if you're thinking about selling your house in the next couple of years, you wanna get the most out of the money you put into either a deck or a patio. So the accepted numbers for um, the resale value of a deck is about 75% of what you put into it, while that same return on investment is only about 40 to 60% for a patio. But you have to keep in mind that a deck can cost twice as much to build, increasing your upfront investment versus the cost savings of building a patio. Consideration number seven is weight. The best example of this is a hot tub. If you're going to put a hot tub on a deck, you need to make some significant structural improvements. You need to plan and you need to really have a focus on how are we going to support the weight of this hot tub full of water where in a patio it's built in there's no real changes that needed there's no additional cost um, other things to consider besides a hot tub would be large crowds if you have large parties or you have holidays and everyone comes over um, in my particular case some of the family we've got some big guys in my family and if there was a lot of them out on a deck, although I wouldn't worry about it collapsing, I do worry about the amount of bounce in the floor, the vibration that you get. So consider how you use it and what your future plans are for weight on your deck or patio. Number eight of the considerations between a deck or patio is safety. So anytime you have a raised platform, you have to pay particular attention to the safety measures that we take when we build it. A patio at ground level really is very simple to make safe, but a raised platform is a real consideration. So if you've got a lot of people, if you've got a lot of big guys, you know, we need to consider the, the, the structure and we need to consider the rails. If we've got a lot of stairs, we need handrails, both sides. Let's not try to save money when it comes to safety um, there's other considerations like kids and pets. Do we need to put special rails? Do we need to provide special gates? Do we need to pay special attention? And is a deck more or less likely to be safe when we build it and we live on it with our families? So number nine in considerations between a deck and a patio is maintenance. And I think this is the one item that it's really a draw. If you're using modern materials to build your deck and modern materials to build your patio, they're both low maintenance. Now, if you use pressure treated, obviously that's gonna require you to treat it every year. The same with mahogany, redwood, um, cedar. They still need to be treated. They still need to be cleaned much more aggressively than if you're using modern materials to build your deck. So that's nine considerations when deciding between building a deck or a patio. Now we've got that bonus information for you. Before we jump into it, please subscribe to our channel 
so you get future notices about the videos that are coming up over the next couple weeks. So this bonus information is about actually making it happen. Right now here in central New Jersey, it is early fall and it's a great time to start planning. Remember, these contractors are busy, um, but they're going to go into their slow season. So reach out to them now and tell them, I want to have my deck or patio ready for April 1st. If I give you four months to get it done, what can I expect in a cost savings? Because that'll help them with their labor costs. When things are slow, it'll be a little easier for them to get it done. It'll also make sure that it's done so you enjoy the entire season next year. And it takes into consideration that we're experiencing extremely long lead times on some materials. So that's my recommendation to you. Plan and start to um, put your plan into action early. Fall is a great time to reach out and get the best price and the best job from a professional contractor. Now, lastly, I told you I was going to tell you what my preferred solutions between decks and patio is, and that's a little bit of a hybrid. I like a patio. I really enjoy our patio on our home. We have lots of people coming and going. We have um, pets. We have family. So having a patio, we're down at ground level. It makes the whole backyard enjoyable. But I think it's also smart to say, if you have a couple steps or a bunch of steps into the house, you could always build a small deck, just big enough to put your grill on and maybe one chair, so that if you are grilling, you don't have to go up and down the stairs. So imagine a six by six, a four by six deck, big enough to put your grill on safely and enjoy, but then a set of stairs down to a much larger patio. This is both a cost savings and in my case, we enjoy our patio because we can take advantage of the backyard. I hope you enjoyed this information. I hope it's useful. Get, subscribe to our channel and hopefully we'll give you more useful information in the future.